Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Rich Carmona, uh, 17th Surgeon General of the United States, the last sitting Surgeon General, and I'm joined by my colleagues here, which I will introduce to you as right now. First and foremost, for me, a friend, a mentor, a really iconic figure in uh, public health in the United States and the world, the 16th Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. David Satcher. Christine Ferguson, and before, let me just preface these remarks by saying I don't do any of these folks justice with the introductions I'm about to give, but because of the time limits, I, I can't spend the time, but all of them are accomplished public health professionals that have, have been in academics, have been in government, and really are leaders on a national, if not international scale. Christine Ferguson, director of the Stop BC Alliance and research professor at GW, uh, who uh, is really the, uh, the embodiment of of what we're all about with STOP now as our leader and bringing us together and bringing all of the, our alliances together, all of you, our partners together. Morgan Downey, policy advisor for the Alliance, and, and Morgan as well, a long history of, of being a, an advocate and active in, in public health and issues that are germane to the American public. Uh, Helen Darling, we're, I since you're not, not making it yet, be, okay. John Leglowski, President and CEO of the Nonprofit Obesity Action Coalition. Again, thanks so much for being with us, uh, Joe. And, and of course, we've got Jeff Levy, uh, Trust for America's Health, Associate Professor at GW. And uh, as many of you know, also uh, a, a very much a powerhouse in public health about issues and teaching a lot of our young students uh, the, the difference between the book knowledge and the practicality of working in the Beltway in public health. I'd like to make a few opening comments now. As Surgeon General of the United States, uh, Dr. Satcher and I had the same duty to prevent, promote, protect the health, safety, and security of our nation and more and more the world as the role of the Surgeon General evolved over the last few decades. Obesity is not just a health issue. It also affects our national and global security. We've reached a tipping point on obesity in the United States. Obesity now impacts every aspect of our society including the future of our health system. Obesity accelerates a series of serious health and non-health consequences that are crippling individuals and hurting American families, our workforce, and our nation. Despite numerous public policies and programs aimed at reducing obesity in America, plus the definitive work released by Dr. Satcher in the 2001 Surgeon General's Call to Action to prevent and decrease overweight and obesity, we continue to struggle with overwhelming human and economic challenges related to overweight and obesity. Many of us supersized when we should have downsized our meals. We often drove cars to purchase processed food when we could have been getting exercise by growing our own fresh food. The health, economic, and emotional burden caused by obesity epidemics are unsustainable. Obesity accounts for about 9% of healthcare expenditures in the United States amounting to about $150 billion in 2008. As I said, obesity is an accelerator of many chronic diseases, such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, stroke, certain cancers, and osteoarthritis. 75 cents of every dollar of the $2.5 trillion we spend on health care is spent on chronic diseases, most of which are preventable or mitigatable, and most of which are accelerated by obesity. Obesity threatens every segment of our society, from our military to our schools, our country, and yes, even our national security, work productivity, and our ability to be prepared for natural and man-made disasters. When we look at one of the top reasons why young men and women fail to be retained on active duty in our uniformed services, obesity again rises to the forefront at a time when we need them more than ever. As we look at the cohort of young individuals, children that we are raising today with unprecedented type 2 diabetes, overweight, obesity, and children now with hypertension in grammar school, what will be our future when we look to them to fill the positions that care for us in our communities at a local level, fire, police, first responders, and in our military services? Who will fill those slots of the, if the cohort of young men and women today will be saddled with unprecedented disease? When I was in office as Surgeon General, I got a striking call one day from some of my epidemiologists at CDC as we were looking through these issues, issues that Surgeon General David Satcher had the vision to bring to our forefront almost a decade ago. But the CDC epidemiologist told us 
Surgeon General Carmona, we are concerned. The epidemiologic curves we're looking at indicate that we could be raising the first generation of children that live less than its parents because of this obesity epidemic. So truly, it is an epidemic. A healthy future for America is in peril. Children as young as 10 are now being diagnosed with chronic conditions often related to weight that previously only affected adults, including type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. If you'll remember, when most of us trained in healthcare, type 2 diabetes was called adult onset diabetes. It is no longer or can be referred to as adult onset diabetes. A lack of clear understanding of this complex health issue caused by prior health literacy by poor health literacy is a challenge to successfully addressing the obesity epidemic. Obesity is not a simple matter of overweight. Obesity is a complex, multifactorial problem. Communities may not include safe places to exercise. Household incomes may not allow people to purchase healthy food. Workplaces may not offer support or resources. Genetics can also explain why some people become overweight or obese and struggle unsuccessfully to lose pounds. Obesity is as complex as it is dynamic. The emotional burden from stigma bears down on our neighbors, friends, and children every day. So many Americans are left without support on how to effectively battle obesity and regain health. Stigma gets in the way of an honest dialogue about this disease and prevents investment in research and innovation. We cannot continue to ignore obesity simply because we are uncomfortable with it, uncomfortable in discussing it at home or in our doctor's office or in policy planning. Health reform that directly addresses the causes of obesity can save lives, save money, improve health and well-being of every American. By working together in a nonpartisan fashion, we can better inform our political leaders, communities, families, and ourselves on the critically important need to end the obesity epidemic and we can accomplish that goal. We must improve the health literacy of the nation. This involves every single individual right up to the federal government, and all of us have a responsibility.